Intel has kicked off the virtual Computex 2021 with a keynote. The keynote lasted for 42 minutes. I'm going to condense it down significantly to around 8 minutes or so. So this video is Leo's whistle stop tour of Intel's keynote at Computex 2021. Let us start with their press release, which is really brief. They've added two new Intel Core U series processors. You can see by the five suffix that these have been kind of crowbarred into the product stack. And you can now get five gigahertz in a U series processor. Secondly, introduction of Intel 5G solution 5000 M.2 5G modems. We want 5G in laptops. This is going to be significant because 5G can beat the pants off Wi-Fi and connect directly with servers rather than having to go through your home Wi-Fi and then back to base. The snag is, as you know full well, Intel sold their 5G modem business a little while ago because they failed to fabricate at 10 nanometer. Been over that a number of times. What they've done here is to rebadge a 5G modem or 5G modems as Intel parts, where actually it seems like the software product stack is the Intel part and the hardware has pretty much nothing to do with them. And here is Intel apparently in the 5G market. Anywho, on with the video. You have to love the closed caption subtitles. So yes, upbeat music indeed. And as you watch this, you think to yourself, well, what's this got to do with Intel? Obviously we're seeing Taipei, we're seeing sunshine, we've got the uplifted spirits. The Intel aspect, pretty much non-existent. But look, there is a laptop. Hello everyone and welcome to Computex 2021. And best of all, you can sense it in every action of our new CEO, Pat Gelsinger. Full props, straight in there with praise of the glorious leader. Pat Gelsinger returning to Intel is big news. Thanks Michelle. What a great feeling to be back at Intel and to address our many friends in the Taiwan ecosystem. We have been working diligently with our partners, including so many of you, to address constraints and increase output to meet demand. And we are acting to help ensure capacity to meet the world's needs for this new area. For example, we've doubled our internal wafer capacity in the past four years. But while the industry has taken steps to address near-term constraints, it could still take a couple of years for the ecosystem to address shortages of foundry capacity, substrates, and components. In March, I unveiled our IDM 2.0 strategy. It's a winning formula that utilizes our internal factory network and strategic use of external foundries to reliably deliver our leadership products and it provides the industry with another source of advanced foundry capacity through our new Intel Foundry services. We've already announced more than $20 billion of new investment in our foundry capability. This includes large scale capacity expansion in Arizona and support for advanced semiconductor manufacturing technologies in New Mexico. We plan to expand to other locations in the US and Europe ensuring a sustainable and secure semiconductor supply chain for the world. IDM 2.0, we're going to make good stuff ourselves. We're going to offer foundry services to the world to make good stuff. We're going to build fab capacity in America and in Europe. And then we're also going to use TSMC to make stuff for us that we can't make ourselves. We're going to do everything and we're going to spend a fortune in the process. What the heck? Stuff will be made by Intel one way or another. Intel's Data Platforms Group is dedicated to enabling the kind of innovations required to advance these data-based superpowers. So I asked Lisa Spellman to give us a quick update. Thank you, Michelle. It's great to be here at Computex with partners who are innovating with us to create solutions that address these superpowers, both here in Taiwan and worldwide. The Xeon platform is the most pervasive data center platform on the market and has an unmatched lineup of processors, accelerators, advanced memory, software, and solutions capabilities enabled globally to holistically solve customers' most challenging problems. Take that MD with your mere processors, graphics, and hopes to have Xilinx under your belt quite soon. We've got loads of good stuff. 
This year, we advanced the capabilities of the Xeon platform with our latest third-gen Xeon scalable processors, which deliver a 50% performance improvement, expanded memory bandwidth, faster I.O. with more lanes of PCI Express, and advanced security capabilities with Intel Software Guard extensions. I'm also excited about our next generation Xeon platform, which will launch next year, as it builds upon these capabilities and delivers advancements in performance, workload acceleration, security, and memory. And this platform is currently being sampled to customers worldwide. That next gen platform, that Sapphire Rapids, that was due in 2021. Here we are a third of the way into a 42 minute uh, keynote and Intel's telling us that Sapphire Rapids has been delayed until next year. Doesn't bode well, does it, for the Aurora supercomputer, which has already been delayed many times. As we all experienced over the last year, technology is increasingly central to every aspect of our lives. And now, more than ever, the role of the PC is clear. It has become the essential tool for doing things that matter most, helping people focus, create, connect, and have fun. The demand is unprecedented. This year is shaping up to be the largest PC market ever with fundamental demand drivers that are here to stay. Fundamental demand drivers that are here to stay. I guess he means working from home and doing those endless blooming Zoom conference calls. Slightly surprised to hear that Intel's quite so upbeat about the future of the PC market. Clearly last year was a huge boom just across the piece. This year, yeah, sure, not surprised it's more of the same. Ongoing and sort of permanently? Okay, that's some confidence from Intel. Innovation unleashed. You heard it from Pat and Michelle, and you see it in our actions and our execution. I'm excited to talk about how we will continue to unleash industry innovation starting with our products. We committed to deliver leadership innovation in the PC client, and we're doing just that. In 2021 alone, we've already announced four new families of processors from entry to premium. Four new families of processors. Can you name them? Tiger Lake, Rocket Lake, Xeon third gen scalable. What's the fourth? I can't think of the fourth. Just three weeks ago, we launched our 11th gen H series mobile processors, the world's best gaming laptop processor, offering desktop caliber gameplay from anywhere. Chuck's gonna show it to you in action. Chuck? Thanks, Steve. I'm really excited to show you all the new 11th gen 8 series processors, which feature a new microarchitecture based on our 10 nanometer super fin technology. Here, I have two similarly configured systems. Yep, that's crisis. On the left is the AMD Ryzen 9 5900 HX processor, and on the right is the new Intel Core i9 11980 HK processor. Both systems have 8 cores and 16 threads, 32 gigs of RAM, and feature NVIDIA's RTX 3080 graphics card. And they are both running the benchmark built into the game Crisis Remastered. With our new H series processors, we can reach 5 GHz, helping to drive higher frame rates for smoother gaming experiences. This makes all the difference when you're playing to win. As the benchmark ends, you can see the resulting score. The benchmark runs through the scenario multiple times. The average frame rate for the Intel system was 117.62 frames per second, while the AMD clocks in with an average score of 95.86 frames per second. Even though both of these systems have identical graphics cards and the same number of cores, the frame rates on the new Intel H-Series processor were more than 20% higher. And I think we can be confident those two processors took the same amount of power and used the same amount of cooling. Today, I am proud to share that our 11th gen Intel Core U-Series family just got better. We're announcing the launch of two new 11th gen Intel Core SKUs. These will deliver performance and extend our leadership in the thin and light notebook category. With this launch, we're delivering up to five gigahertz in high volume thin and light designs this is an industry first. We're also maintaining a 25% overall application performance advantage versus the competition. We're accelerating the number of designs with Intel Wi-Fi 6E, that's gig plus speeds, to enable the biggest thing to happen to Wi-Fi in 20 years. And finally, we're unleashing software optimizations to deliver up to 8x faster transcoding and up to 2x video editing speeds versus the competition. 
and that explains the fourth family of processors. H series is one family, U series is another family. They're all Tiger Lakes, but up to four cores is one thing, up to eight cores is another. Mystery solved. Recently, Mike Coker went to the river and wanted to capture his first time paddle boarding. He used a total of six 4K cameras, two located on his board, two on shore, one on his chest, and one up above on a drone. To quickly create a highlight reel of his adventures, let's review all of our video clips simultaneously within Adobe Premiere. We're talking GoPro types of cameras, no doubt, which means variable frame rate, highly compressed, and an absolute pig to work with in Premiere. Six 4K video feeds. This is the scenario Intel has chosen. We can easily select the videos we want and the order to use them. On this Intel Evo laptop, powered by our new 11th Gen U series, we can review all of that 4K content smoothly. In fact, we can play back more than 99% of those frames. Meanwhile, the competition drops 99% of those same frames. Imagine trying to create a compelling video with what you see on the screen here. The performance lag of the competitive system makes it incredibly difficult to quickly review and edit content. That's an amazingly specific use case. Intel, however, is almost certainly correct. Their video coders, decoders are very good indeed. AMD, not so much. So Intel is very much playing to their strengths, but the idea they have to pick a scenario with six 4K video feeds, probably at variable frame rate, wow, that's really scraping the barrel. Our upcoming product, codenamed Alder Lake, will deliver the next set of compute advancements that the industry is looking for. As we previewed at CES, our Alder Lake desktop processor is powered on and running smoothly. And I'm also excited to share that Alder Lake Mobile is also powered on and executing beautifully. We're sampling to customers and partners as we speak, and there's gonna be a lot more to share on the entire Alder Lake lineup later this year. Stay tuned. Seriously, that's it. We don't even know which is coming first out of Alder Lake Mobile and Alder Lake Desktop. Just the fact that both are up and running. Today, you heard about our drumbeat of product innovation since CES. Gaming and our 11th Gen H Series leadership, we launched two new SKUs making 11th Gen U Series even better. We continued our connectivity leadership with the launch of the Intel 5G product, and Alder Lake is just on the horizon. I'm not impressed, really I'm not. I didn't expect much from Intel, but I thought they might pull something out of the bag for this uh, announcement. So we've got two revised SKUs of the U-Series uh, Tiger Lake processor. We've got some rebadged 5G modems and slipped in the middle there, we've got the Sapphire Rapids has been pushed back uh, to some point next year. That's not good news. Uh, meanwhile, Intel's busy spending a fortune increasing capacity around the planet, but particularly in America and Europe, uh, which is, I have to say, good news. So that's the opening of Computex, Intel big disappointment. I'm not honestly expecting much more from either AMD or Nvidia, but hopefully some of the other companies at Computex are gonna have something more exciting to share with us.